Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to our discussion today. With our panelists, we shall explore aspects that affect the experiences of early stage and prospective female startuppers, such as the challenges that these women face and have faced, and how we could do better to support them in strengthening their position with the ecosystem and realizing their dreams and ambitions. Together with us today, we have Ms. Asimina Bruzu, who is a co-founder and lead project manager of Shalidu Inclusion. Shalidu creates innovative educational games for every age, and their main mission is the delivery of products and services that transform the education to an experiential discovery game. We have Ms. Vicky Klimi, who is the Chief Empowerment Officer of a senior care platform. And this is the largest platform for uh, supporting uh, senior citizens and their families with their care at home. It has branches in Greece and they have corporations also outside Greece. We have together with us Ms. Christina Gardikioti, who is the founder of um, the Meraki people. And she will explain a little bit more to us of the nice things that she's doing. And we have, and later on, we'll be joined by Mr. Mihaly Stangos, who is the founder and co-founder of innovative and traditional companies and organization. And he's the president and CEO of an integrative communication group of companies, MC Co. So, ladies, uh, now I shall, uh, I would like to pass uh, the cyber floor to you. So we know that starting a business isn't easy at all. You have all faced it, but uh, you are still there and you are persisting, and which is a great thing. Whether it's picking a business idea, creating a business plan, or attempting to secure funding, a lot of things can go wrong, but a lot of things can go right as well. However, with a solid idea and a strong support system, a woman entrepreneur can become a successful one and rise and shine. According to various reports, the numbers of women entrepreneurs in Europe are in the range of 15%, and still women raise only about 38% less capital than men when starting under the same conditions. So today, I would like to hear from you what are the challenges that you have faced? And what are, to start with, what are the best solutions? We shall have a round of uh, three questions for each one of you. Let me start with Ms. Uh, Cristina Gardicchiotti. I would like to give to each one of you a couple of minutes to express your views. What are the challenges and what could be the solutions so that each one of you can have sufficient time to express their views? Cristina, the flower, the, Cristiana, the cyber floor is yours. Christiana, you need to unmute your um, mic. You're so right. Uh, Excellent. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I was saying uh, that I am uh, very thankful, uh, privileged and honored to be in the panel. 15% um, is a number that we need to uh, reverse or uh, to make it way better to the 50, 60 or 70%. The biggest challenge that I, I faced, and I think most women entrepreneurs do face, is um, it has three uh, feet, three, three, uh, yeah, th three uh, faces. A is lack of professional, professionalism, uh, that women have and that the market is expecting. Um, there is a lack of credibility that we need to absolutely address and guard it as our child. And then there is a definite lack in believing that women can do better in financing. Therefore, women to have access on an equal base to financing their projects. The solution uh, to practice is to make it happen again and again and become very good at what you do. 
we need to create traction that increases credibility because acts and actions speak louder than any business plan or any words. I think I have a very good recipe for the financing part. I started where I was. I did what I could do with what I had. And those were pretty meager and small things, but entrepreneurship is about creativity and resourcefulness. So today I am where I am because of those characteristics. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christiana. So if you would like to mute your mic and I shall pass the cyber floor now to uh, Miss uh, Vicky Klimi. Vicky, the cyber floor is yours. Challenges and solutions. Thank you so much for being here. I'm sorry, but I'm using my mobile because I had an issue with my laptop. So I'll try to keep it stable. Uh, yes, I think that um, uh, a startup is a process where you meet yourself and your better self. That means that uh, every level of the video game needs uh, better skills. So every level, every next level of startup need, needs uh, for us to be prepared and be better and better all the time. Uh, I think there is no limitation on this because uh, it's time you, you find something that you didn't know before. Uh, for example, I'm uh, working for a tech company actually, and I didn't have any idea before. Uh, to tell you the truth, I, I didn't like it. I mean, uh, no, I like it very much, but before, before I joined Grandmama, I said to myself, I will never be a part of a tech company. So this time I'm a CEO of Grandmama, a tech company. And not only this, but also I'm joining meetings with tech people and in order to join to, to find solutions for the business using technology. So I do believe that, yes, we need to be better every time and to never stop, uh, have faith and uh, sunshine will come even after the worst, the, the worst uh, rain. Excellent. Thank you very much. I like the, what you said at the beginning uh, about the video game. Sometimes I, when I have private discussions, I tell my friends, sometimes I feel like Sonic. I pass levels. So <laughs> you see, each time I reach a level, okay, then we need to go to the next one. You don't know what's after that, but you still have to keep on walking. And uh, you complete each stage and each level, and it's quite challenging, but you have to keep on going. So thank you very much. And now, uh, Miss Asimina Bruzu. Asimina, the cyber floor is yours. Happy to hear your experience, challenges and solutions. I also very liked uh, the approach of uh, Mrs. Vicky Klimi for video games, uh, since we are also an organization working with games. So <laughs> thank you for sharing this. Uh, for me, um, the first and probably the only challenge is uh, dealing with our fears dealing with our fears to coming out, to uh, start, to, to plan, to, to find uh, the resources, to find uh, um, uh, the next actions, to, to, to find uh, all the knowledge and skills we need uh, to network uh, and uh, in general to, to as uh, Vicky said, to, to go to the next level, to, to uh, stop uh, uh, fearing things, uh, stop uh, saying that uh, probably I'm not enough, uh, uh, probably it's a man-made world, uh, probably uh, 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 they will uh, not um, uh, respect me or they, they will not, uh, I will not so professional. Uh, uh, I think uh, when we deal with all this uh, fear, we can uh, go to the next uh, level. 
And uh, in order to do so, uh, knowledge and uh, meeting other uh, people at the state, and of course, women at the same uh, stage, uh, it's very important uh, for uh, uh, sharing practices and uh, going to the next level uh, with them. This is uh, my perspective. <laughs> Excellent. I know, I know what you're talking about, especially when it comes to fear. It can be crippling and uh, we need to know how to deal with it. Nobody teaches us how to deal with fear. You just do crash tests constantly and then you just have to move on. Uh, that's why I, I shall use this uh, instance to go to the, what I had initially foreseen as a third question. But I think that networking and having the right support network can help you overcome this fear. So my next question would be building your network and then also, also access to the right information. This is something that we have discussed with Christiana at another panel. So I'm happy to see that Christiana has evolved and it's really, really encouraging. So I would like to have Christiana starting again telling us a couple of words about this aspect of building your network and how important this is, your support network, and also the access to information, the right information at the right moment from the right people and by the right people and for the right people. So, Christiana, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Elsa. Um, I think uh, going back to the fear, one of the fears that women do face is the fear of reaching out. And a lot of times they, because by nature, they don't do that. Yet it's the most powerful of dexterities that they can have. Um, I, in my um, professional life, uh, I had this absolute gift of I guess not having that fear. So to me, it was very natural to go out and reach. And think, and I would like to encourage any woman that is contemplating about um, whether or not she should go out and reach out. They, the only thing that can happen is they can say no. And then you face and you say, very good, could you please tell me someone that would tell me a yes? So you move on. I think that um, networking is an almighty power that um, is the most crucial aspect of the growth because it is not only money or financial aid that a company needs. I'm not saying that financial is not important. Of course, it is important. But I think the social capital is what it, it's the magic, uh, you know, the, the, the magic soup, the, the, the ingredient that, uh, as we say in Greek, you know, makes your plate uh, extremely delightful. So social capital, without social capital, I don't know if, that, if any business uh, would go anywhere. So... Um, reach out, don't be scared. And the information, as far as the information is concerned, I think that using the internet is the most powerful tool that we have available. And it's only as far as the extent of our hands. Um, if we use it correctly, we can have any access and it's all there. It's becoming acutely dexterous to finding that information and it takes practice. Absolutely, absolutely. The so-called and the famous business intelligence. And I think this kind of dexterity, there are few, very, very few people who realize the power of it and also are willing to employ the time, the effort, and the resources necessary to develop this kind of business intelligence. And now, Vicky, the cyber floor is yours so that we can hear your views. 
I would like to ask our panelists again to mute themselves to avoid echoes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I fully agree with uh, Christiana, what she said, and uh, I would like to share an example of mine, uh, a kind of networking that uh, was uh, really awarding. Uh, as grandmama, we took place to um, a European contest of startups. Uh, we didn't win, but in the end, there was uh, a jury who contacted me asking me to know more about Grandmama and what we're doing, what we're planning to do. He saw our pitch and uh, he was really interested in this. So uh, we got, uh, we had uh, contacted and um, after some discussions, uh, he proposed us and uh, we were very happy about it. This was our award to be in our advisory board and a very senior C-level uh, uh, guy that uh, has uh, European experience uh, in uh, some area of what we're doing. And it was really, really important for us that uh, a man like him, he was uh, interested for grandmama. He saw something, he saw the sparkle, not only the pitch, but the sparkle behind the pitch. And uh, he's with us and we're really happy. Uh, I, I do believe that networking is really important. I do it every day in my life. And uh, I do believe that the time comes when a person will be there for you or the opposite. Because networking is not only to, to gain something or to have uh, people around you, but also to help people, also to share knowledge, share passion, and be there when someone needs you uh, for advice or whatever. So I do believe that it is an exchange of uh, energy. And uh, yes, you can learn it. You can do it. And every little no, as Christiana said, uh, takes you to a yes. Absolutely. It's what you said, that every little no can take you to the yes. Until you get to that yes, it can be <laughs> quite an extenuating trip again. But as we mentioned before, we need to be able to go through the levels. Somehow it is harder for passionate women, I would say. But I think we're getting there. I already have three amazing women here with me. And now, Asimina, another amazing woman, share your experience with, uh, woman, uh, share your experience with us and give us also another nice example of your um, successful networking. Okay, I can say that uh, if uh, we didn't network, uh, we couldn't have been here in this panel. Uh, I've been uh, either me or our organization in general. Uh, networking uh, is the key for me, uh, either for um, fundraising as uh, we have already probably discussed, so you can take also some no's <laughs> uh, and some yes, of course, uh, but also for, uh, for, um, uh, for exploring uh, different uh, um, views and finding new resources, uh, either of knowledge or of people or of networks in general. Uh, to support you. Uh, for us, a key point in our um, startup uh, was uh, our participation in uh, different uh, uh, incubators and accelerators. Uh, when we got there and uh, started networking, uh, uh, both with uh, the educators within these uh, frames, uh, but also with other organizations, uh, either NGOs as, as we are, but also uh, for-profit organizations, uh, it was uh, like uh, a magic touch uh, that uh, uh, this um, dialogue and this uh, uh, resourcefulness of all uh, these uh, people uh, in these uh, incubators wa was really uh, uh, unexpected for us and uh, it was a key uh, to go to the next uh, level of our organization. Also, if I can say something, uh, I think uh, mentoring and finding a 
a person who can be a mentor for uh, you or your organization, uh, or even uh, different uh, people in different sectors that can be mentors uh, uh, is a very valuable tool uh, for uh, going to the next uh, level. Okay, excellent. I think you mentioned there are three also key points, which is mentoring. I myself, for the moment, I have a mentor, which is in a completely, and the second key point that you mentioned is a different sector, which is very nicely combined with what also Christiana uh, mentioned and Vicky about this transdisciplinary approach so that you can expose yourself to different types of feedback and different experiences and not fearing, coming back to the fear of reaching out and hearing different views, even if this seem, even if this may bring out that you're doing something wrong, but that's okay, which happened to me two days ago, actually. So <laughs> I had to correct something and adapt, but it's, but it's absolutely fine because that's the way we work and also sharing uh, knowledge and experience. I think, as they say, alone, you can go as far but together can go much further. I don't think If that... I can add something uh, yes, for yes. just a moment. Uh, for us, it was also uh, a change of perspective of our organization when uh, we uh, get uh, into networking with uh, also other NGOs from different uh, fields of work. So with NGOs that work on a specific uh, target group, for, uh, for example, like people with dementia. And we have never imagined, let's say, that uh, we as an educational organization, we will work with people with dementia. But this uh, gets our organization to the next level. So uh, we could have stayed in uh, developing uh, material just for kids. Uh, as we usually the educational organization do but uh, we go to the next level and uh, develop uh, more our organization so networking for us is a key to develop uh, not only uh, in the start your organization but also uh, after it to to see new approaches Absolutely. You're absolutely right about this, which brings me also to the next question, which is market access, basically. And um, if we have time, I would like also to address uh, the technology aspect of this. In this question, I would like to start with uh, Vicky. Uh, when it comes to market access, I have a very, very, uh, I have a very, um, I have an example of a very close friend of mine who's in a completely different sector in jewelry. I remember at her, uh, when she started walking from a lawyer to a jewelry designer, and now she's in the most, in the list of the most sought after uh, jewelry designers. She's a Greek. And um, this market access aspect has been quite challenging for her, but then through a support network, she managed to get there. What has been your experience? What are the lessons learned? And what would you, pre what would you do, what would you have done differently when it comes to market access? Vicky, the cyber floor is yours. Thank you, Elsa. Um, I, I do believe uh, that uh, very it is very important when it comes to market access to, to hear, to hear a lot, uh, to hear your, your uh, potential clients uh, or uh, other people that they might uh, um, influence people to buy the service or the product. So uh, what we have done so far is to spend many, many hours uh, talking with uh, relatives, mainly with relatives, uh, that they have, uh, that they're experiencing issues with their uh, parents, usually, and, and to understand the pain points, to see what they really need, not only what we think that they need, because, uh, okay, you cannot create a product or a service just by your experience. You can understand the dynamics. You can understand the, uh, some people saying, oh, I would love to buy this or use this. But in the end, what it remains is that to, 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 to test it, actually to test, to hear and test. So uh, we spent also many hours with uh, caregivers because for us, both of them, all these groups are really important and we need to know their pain points. So. 
this gave us uh, the opportunity to enter the market more easily uh, than uh, coming out without knowing nothing or without testing. So, and we use this uh, method, the agile method. So what we do, we, we go out, we test, and we come back, we redesign, and then we go out again. Uh, I think this is uh, a key point for someone. If so uh, what I would love to say and share with you is that word of mouth, especially in our business, is really strong and powerful. So that means that uh, even in a, in a hard case, or even if you, uh, you don't make it in, in a case uh, and something goes wrong, you have to manage this crisis. And when you manage it in a good manner, in a good way, then the reputation stays. This is also really important, I, I, I think so, because we make mistakes. And, uh, but we're trying to, to do less mistakes than yesterday. <laughs> and uh, uh, I think that uh, people should go out, ask, and hear. Don't speak at all, just hear. Thank you. Excellent. This is a very, very nice skill that uh, I think uh, we all need to practice, which is just listening. Okay, just listening, hear the needs, not think that because you have something in your head, you're the best, brightest, the most beautiful, and your solution is going to be the best out there. And then wonder why nobody cares about it, actually. Because you really need to be able to solve a real problem when you have a startup. And you need to understand the problem and the needs of the people who have the problem and help maybe shape the problem a little bit so that you can make it less of a problem, actually. So you seem to be doing this. And Asimina, are you doing this? And what are you doing? What have you done? Uh, yes, as uh, Vicky said, uh, I also think that the most important is to, to listen, to listen to uh, mainly the, the target group that uh, you address. Uh, and as I said before, uh, um, Due to this uh, listening process, uh, we also uh, develop, uh, developed our uh, uh, organization more. We developed new programs, we developed new projects, new um, products uh, uh, for other target groups that uh, uh, really needed and uh, this, uh, this facilitation of uh, serious games, as we say, uh, I think it's very important to, to listen and to continue um, communicating uh, uh, with people of target group, but also with uh, uh, other organizations uh, around you uh, and hear their, uh, um, their problems or their potential uh, problems uh, uh, that they will face in uh, uh, in the future. For example, uh, COVID was one of these <laughs> issues, and uh, I think uh, specifically technological uh, companies uh, uh, and uh, products uh, really helped uh, towards this. Uh, um, approach of uh, resolving uh, uh, problems of people uh, during this uh, very difficult era. So, uh, for example, we have turned our organization to a more digital one because of the needs of the people. Uh, I think it's very important to, to hear uh, people and to not only speak, uh, but also hear. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. We don't have very much time left. This is why I will pass the floor directly to Christiana. So for me, kind of listening equals also with sustain sustainability of business, if I understood correctly. So Christiana, what's your views on this? You are on mute. Sorry. Sorry. Excellent. I need to be, uh, become, okay. Uh, what I would like to say is that, uh, first of all, I learned to go and discover my client, interview them, and be um, a person that knows their day, knows their agony. For me, 
when I first said I'm going to create a regenerative village in Mount Parnunas, uh, people reacted to me like uh, this was utopic. This could not have been done in Greece. And okay, there were kind of inside their head saying, where is she going to give up? Like, you know, failure. Um, I think not only that you need to collect data, of course you do need to collect data, uh, but also you need to collect soft data. And I think that was the most important discovery that I had in my business. I was asked, have you danced your concept? Have you made a poem out of your concept? Have you made a song out of your concept? Have you shared it with others? And yes, I have invited people to come, to see, to experience, and for them to tell me what I need to do to make it more successful. But at the end of all this, we sang, we played music, and we made poetry. Excellent. Uh, I think our time is almost done. I would like to thank all of you. Summaring, uh, summarizing what we said, I would say be atomic, literally. Don't be afraid to walk in a room and having everybody feeling as if an atomic bomb just walked in. You just do your thing. Then sing in a choir because you need to listen and sing at the same time, basically. And then just believe, first of all, in what you do. And then also have people that believe in you and what you do. So thank you very much for your uh, time, for your excellent advice. It was very nice in meeting you all. And uh, I wish you lots of success. And uh, yes, enjoy your summertime. And maybe sometime I will have the pleasure to meet you all. Thank Bye. You. Like Thank one. you, Elsa. Elsa. Bye-bye. Good luck. Good luck to all of us. <laughs>